Welcome all to this session, which is going to discuss the kinetics of a particle, force and acceleration, and describing the equations of motion using rectangular coordinate. So the objectives of this session are, first we are going to introduce and set up the equations of motion and rectangular coordinates as, as we discussed, and then we are going to talk about uh, friction as well as spring. If we assume that there is a particle P, as shown over here, moving along this path, which is just a general path, and we would like to describe its motion using rectangular coordinates, then basically we would have to construct the coordinate, as shown, X, Y, and Z. And uh, clearly we are going to describe the position of the particle by the x component, y component, and the z component. Now, the forces acting on the particle are going to be called fz, fy, and fx. And as you see, they are vectors. And if you remember, we can write down the Newton's second law summation of the forces equals to the mass multiplied by the acceleration vector now which means if we want to describe the motion of this particle of this particle then we would have to write the equation as follows we will sum up all the forces in the x direction and we will sum up all the forces. As you see, the forces here are magnitudes, and we are putting the component, the unit vector i, j, and k for the direction. And then we will sum up all the forces in the z direction along the k, which is equal to the total mass multiplied by, again, the acceleration here. We are writing the magnitude with the unit vector for the direction plus a y j plus a z k now as we know from mathematics this equation is actually three equations and three scalars equation three scalar equations so what are we going to do we can simply write down that the the sum of the forces along the x direction equals to m a x and the sum of the forces along the y direction equals to m a y and the sum of the forces along the z direction equals to m a z so here let me just remind you about uh, the free body diagram method so first you need to draw the object uh, separately then you need to draw all the forces acting on that object obtain x y and z component of all the forces to calculate the net force and then apply the newton second law to obtain the acceleration use the acceleration in any motion analysis and establish a kinetic diagram One of the most common forces that we encounter whenever we study the kinetics of bodies uh, are the normal and the friction force. Now, as we all know, if a body has a mass, then it will spontaneously generate a weight. And that weight is represented by this arrow, which has a magnitude of mg where m is the mass and g is the gravitational acceleration. Uh, from the Newton's third law, we know that every action has a reaction, opposite in direction, equal in magnitude, so we will have the normal force acting against the, the weight, which is Fn. And also, if the body happens to rest on a rough surface, then as the force here is applied, then this force is going to be opposed by a frictional force. 
Now, as far as the normal force, Fn is equal to minus mg. It's always opposite to the weight. For the friction, we're going to have more details in the next slide. When we talk about the friction, we should take into account that there are actually two types of a friction. One of them is called the static friction and the other one is called the dynamic friction. And we can explain here the difference uh, between them. If we measure the friction as a coefficient and, and, and we will see that as far as the body is in static mode where we would need to push more and more and more until the instant when the body starts moving. So the static friction can have a maximum value up to here. But the strange thing is that once the body starts to move, the friction drops down. And this naturally explains this thing, uh, experience that we face whenever we have a heavy object lying on the ground and then we would need to apply uh, more and more force until the body starts to slide. Once the body starts to slide, it feels easier to keep it moving. And this explains why the dynamic friction is less. So if we, if we would write the friction force, F, small f, then here it is equals to mu s by fn, which is the normal force, while the dynamic one, the friction here, is equals to mu k fn. Now, what you should know here is that static friction parallel force uh, on the surface when there is no relative motion, there is no motion between the two objects. The static friction force can vary from zero to maximum. The coefficient of the static friction is material dependent. Now, for the kinetic friction, mu k, kinetic friction parallel force on the surface when there is relative motion between the two objects. The kinetic friction is always the same and it has one uh, equation F, which I wrote already, mu k fn. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is also material dependent. Now, the question is when should we use static friction and when should we use kinetic friction? Well, if the two objects have relative motion then the, the answer is very simple they are moving with respect to each other and you simply should use the friction force as mu k by f n however if you calculate if you were able to calculate the friction force here over there this is this is the friction force and you calculated this is f f and at the same time, you were able to calculate the maximum static friction, which is equal to mu static F n, and you compare them. So if that friction force is greater than the maximum static friction, so if this force is actually greater than this, then you should use kinetic friction. And the reason why is that this force would never go beyond this. If you remember the diagram, we have it like this. The friction value goes up all the way and then it dropped, dropped down. So this value is the maximum, which is a mu s f n. So you can't just go beyond it. This is never going to happen. And if you get that friction force greater than this value, then there is something wrong. So 
it's a, the body is probably moving and you should use a mu k instead of mu s so otherwise if this force happens to be less than this then then the force then you should use the static friction that's it another common type of force which we also encounter whenever we study the kinetic of body is the spring force which is basically the force resulting from either stretching or compressing a spring and what we see here in this um, illustration is that if the spring is unstretched it is we consider this position as the zero position so this the spring is not generating any force because we did not compress it or stretch it but once you load the spring with a certain by a certain weight then as we know the spring is going to stretch the amount of stretch is s which is related to the amount of force generated on the spring which we are going to study in the next slide so as i described in the previous slide if the spring is unstretched we consider that its length is l0 and after stretching it we consider the final length as l now the force generated on the spring is calculated as f sometimes we call it f spring for example we put s but here let's just focus on the force which is equal to k multiplied by s where s is equal to l minus l0 so i can write the force of the spring as k multiplied by l minus l0 now what is k k is the spring stiffness measured in a newton per meter or a unit of force divided by a unit of length is is the stretched or compressed or compressed length of the spring now let's have it an example where we have a smooth two kilogram collar that's the collar and as shown in the figure and it is attached to a spring which has a stiffness of three newton meter and unstretched length of 0.75 so the spring when it was at this position it was unstretched so this length is actually l0 if the collar is released if this is released so if we hold it right there and then we release it because it has a, a, a mass of two kilogram it will start falling down and as it falls down it will have acceleration so what we want is that if the collar is released from rest at a and uh, we want to determine its acceleration and the normal force on the uh, of the rod on the collar so this is the normal force or uh, i mean this is the normal force which is going to be generated uh, uh, of the rod on the collar and at the instant when y which is the this height is equals to one meter so starting with the free body diagram which is already drawn over here for you we have the collar it has a weight which is mg equals to 19.62 newton this came from mg which is 2 kilogram multiplied by 9.81 and at the same time we have a force acting in this direction because of the spring if you remember the spring was right here and at the same time as the spring is pulling the collar in this direction the rod itself because here we have the rod let me try just to have it drawn over here slightly like the rod is here so the spring is trying to to push in this direction but the rod is going to oppose this and it will apply an opposite force on the collar which we call it nc so that's the name nc now if we have the free body diagram as you see we also need to 
establish the coordinate system whenever we have a free body diagram. Don't forget that. So we have x direction here, y direction, so down is positive, and this is the direction of positive acceleration. Now, if we write down the equation of motion, the second law, uh, we assume that down is positive. We sum up the forces along the y direction, and this is equals to MAY. So if we do this, we have the normal force, mg, which is right there. And in the opposite, we have the component of Fs. So Fs is here, and this is theta. So Fs will have one component here and another component there. So the component, which is in the y direction here, is upward, so it's negative. So minus Fs by sine theta, which is equal to MAY. Now, if we take the right-hand side as positive, then and we sum up the forces along X and say this is equals to MAX, then what we are going to get, we are going to get the collar force, which is NC negative, plus the component, the other component of the spring, which is F S cosine theta, and this one is equal to zero. Why? Because along the motion, this collar is moving only on the x in the y direction. It never gonna move in this direction, and this is why there will be no motion. If there is no motion, the acceleration is zero, and this is why this is zero. Now, to sum up, we have N C. Fs, theta, and a, all of them are unknown. Now, let's just start with the spring force. So, the spring force, Fs, is equal to Ks. Now, as we know, K was given as 3 Newton per meter. What we need to know is what is the stretch, which is S. So, S is the amount of stretch. So it is equals to CP minus AP. What are those lengths? Well, this is CB, the entire length at this position when Y equals to 1. While AB is the initial length when this one was at rest. And what we want is to calculate this using the following so this is going to be the square root of y square plus 0 0.75 square minus 0 0.75 so why is that well what we did over here is that we calculated the entire length here which is the hypotenuse and it is basically equals to this length square plus this length square under the square root. But this entire length is not the stretched length. If the spring is at position, uh, if, this, if the length of the spring is 0.75, there is no stretch. So we need to subtract the entire length. Uh, we need to subtract 0.75 from the entire length to get the amount of stretch. So this S is going to be equals to the. 1 square plus 0.75 square minus 0.75, which is equal to 0.5 meter. Now, we need also to calculate the angle, this angle theta. Why? Because we need it when, when we do the force analysis. So, theta is equal to the tan inverse of y divided by 0.75. We know that y was given as 1. So this is 1 divided by 0.75, which is equal to 53.13 degrees. Now, from the force equation, which relate the normal force on the, at the collar in C and the friction force, we got Fs, I mean, minus in C plus Fs multiplied by cosine theta, which is equals to 0. 
if we solve for nc then we will get the friction force fs multiplied by cosine theta now the friction force is equal to k which is a 3 multiplied by s which is half so i would have to multiply it by 3 multiplied by 0.5 and then multiply it by cosine 53.13 and this is going to give me a positive 0.9 newton now when i draw the free body diagram if you remember i this was the color and this is f s and this is m g and i assume that this is the direction of n c now if the answer here is positive it means that this direction is right if it is negative it means that the direction is supposed to be the opposite and this is why since this is positive i still have this force and c acting in this direction now from the other equation which was mg minus f spring sine theta equals to m a y i can solve for a y which is equal to g minus f spring divided by m sine theta which is equal to 9.81 minus 3 multiplied by 0.5 which is uh, the spring constant and the stretch that we calculated from the previous slide divided by the mass which is 2 kilogram multiplied by sine 53.13 degrees and if we do this calculation we will get this as 9.21 meter per second square positive which means that when we assume that the acceleration is downward positive this means that the body was accelerating it, if, it, if the direction came out to be negative this means that it is decelerating so to summarize what we discussed in this chat in this session we established the equations of motion in, rect in rectangular coordinates we discussed the friction force and we discussed the spring force that's it thank you